Hey, what's going on guys? Ray here with STL Tones and today in this video, I wanna talk about seven tips that you can follow to get the best results out of your plugin. So over the past couple weeks, I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys, which I really appreciate about what is my opinion on how to get the best sound possible from my guitar and bass plugin. And so today I compiled a list and I wanna share it with you guys. So starting right off, number one, getting it right at the source with your guitar. Your instrument needs to be properly in tune, intonated and have all functioning electronics. Everything from the height of the strings to how well your guitar is wired and grounded inside the electronic cavity all factors into the end result of your sound. So make sure everything works in your guitar, it is set up and is in tune and you're good to go. Step number two, getting the right type of levels. It is crucial to make sure that your interface has the proper settings and the proper preamps for your guitar. If your audio interface does not have instrument level capabilities and you attempt to record yourself going right into your audio interface, you will begin to clip and distort your guitar signal because your guitar signal is a high impedance unbalanced signal. And basically what that means is your signal has way too much input, way too much gain for your audio interface if it does not have instrument level capabilities. But if your audio interface does have instrument level capabilities, make sure you select that prior to recording. Okay, now tip number three is a bit unique because it is an open-ended question and we're talking about DI boxes. Now, as I just said previously, a guitar signal is a high impedance unbalanced signal and the output and the gain of that signal is way too much for your audio interface. Unless otherwise indicated, your audio interface is looking for mic level signals in the preamps because you have mic preamps built in and not instrument preamps. And this is where the DI box comes in. The DI box converts your high impedance unbalanced signal from your instrument and converts it into a low impedance balanced signal and then takes that into your audio interface. So do you even really need a DI box? Well, I'll let you guys answer that. I'll leave that unanswered because as I said previously, most audio interfaces come now with instrument level capabilities, but at the same time, at the end of the day, if you want the cleanest signal possible, it's always good to invest in a DI box. Okay, tip number four guys is watch your input and output levels. Your input level is the amount of gain and the amount of signal that's going into your audio interface, into your DAW and into your plugin, and the output level is the amount of sound or amount of gain coming out of your plugin and coming out of your doll. A basic rule of thumb guys, stay out of the red. If your signal is going into the red guys, that means you are clipping and that means you're distorting your signal and it is not a clean signal any longer. A good way to check this on your interface is to do some heavy chugs, some heavy palm mutes and the hardest you'll ever play on your recording. Don't attempt to set the input levels when you're playing the softest part of your song because then once you play your hardest part of your song or the heaviest part of your song, you'll begin to distort and clip your signal. So if you start out playing the heaviest and the hardest part of your song right off the bat, you will have no worries about clipping throughout the rest of your track. Okay, tip number five, watch your buffer size. Now the buffer size is a bit technical, but stay with me. If you have a low buffer size in your DAW or in your standalone, you're gonna be putting more stress on your computer, but there'll be as little as latency as possible. And if you have a high buffer, now this won't necessarily put as much stress on your computer, but it will take a lot more time to have your computer process your signal and emit sound, and therefore you'll experience latency. Again, a general rule of thumb and a nice guideline for your buffer size is when you're tracking, have it as low as possible to where you can not experience any latency, but your DAW can handle it or your computer can handle it and you're not crashing. And then once you start adding more and more plugins and you start to mix, then you can increase your buffer size and therefore you don't necessarily have to worry about latency because you're mixing, you're not playing directly along with your track or your click. Okay, tip number six, we're on the home stretch. Tip number six is watch your gain on your amplifier. The more gain you add, the less dynamic your guitar is, the more distorted your guitar is, obviously, and the less articulate your track is. You can certainly make your guitars bigger, thicker, and fuller, not by necessarily grabbing the gain knob on the amplifier, but using techniques such as quad tracking, for example. It's all up to you in terms of personal preference and what you need for your specific project, but at the end of the day, guys, I find it's best to use as little as gain as possible, and your guitars will be much more cleaner and sound better. And tip number seven, guys, the final tip is to get rid of unwanted noise. Guitars and bass are very noisy instruments to begin with, and then once you try to mute unwanted noise, it can be tough to tame. Techniques such as adding a fret wrap behind the nut, as well as taping down a stop tailpiece, will get rid of unwanted ringing strings when you're playing. Another technique is using your picking hand to mute unwanted strings when you're playing in the lower register, and another technique is using your fretting hand to do the same exact thing. By using your hands, as well as pieces of gear to mute unwanted strings and unwanted noises, you can really make your guitar sound as clean as possible. So guys, that is my list on how to make your plugin sound as good as possible. How'd you guys think I did? If there's something that I left out that you think absolutely needs to be on this list, leave it down below in the comments and we'll discuss it. Guys, if you're brand new to the channel and you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and that bell icon, I'd really appreciate it. I sincerely thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.